Denver Police Department. An emergency curfew order is in place in the city of Denver from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. You must leave all public areas immediately. If you refuse to comply, you are subject to immediate arrest under Denver Revised Municipal Code 1-13. unusual scene in this city, but the name George Floyd has been on the lips of protesters tonight. Dark military style riot here, for lack of a better term, and I just heard something in the distance, and now you see people scrambling. You can see tear gas on the south side of the step here. George Floyd and the Breonna Taylor deaths for a lot of people just highlighted this issue of state sanctioned violence by police uh, for the very first time I said you know I'm glad folks have joined us but you're late uh, you're late to this conversation but seeing someone's face so clearly and hearing someone cries for help so clearly just really ignites that anger inside of you I don't think anybody that saw that was unaffected by it even if you're someone that justifies it in some way. You could not have possibly seen that video and been unaffected by it. And with that video of George Floyd, it was indisputable in some ways. Uh, they were like, oh, this is really happening. You must leave all the public areas immediately. If you refuse to comply, you are subject to immediate what the fuck? Yeah, I'm Dr. April Alexander. I live in Denver, Colorado, and I'm an associate professor in psychology at the University of Denver and a community organizer with Black Lives Matter 5280. My name is Kesey Allen. Um, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, but I've lived in Denver or in the Denver metro area for about three years now. Um, I am an organizer slash activist with Black Lives Matter 5280, but I also organize independently. My name is Andres Alvarez. Uh, I am in, I live in Englewood right now. Um, and then my current role, I would say I'm an independent activist and a photographer. My name is Rue Johnson. I live in Denver, Colorado, and the organization where all of my social activism lives is the Denver Creative Industries Alliance. Uh, I'm Azria Arroyo, and I uh, grew up in Denver, but now live slightly outside of Denver, and I'm an independent organizer. The New York Times is saying that this was probably the biggest uh, protest movement in our, the history of our country. Um, that's a lot of people who were waking up for the very first time and getting on board with the movement. Um, I actually had someone send me a message saying that they wish they were on I-25 because they would have ran us over. Um, but you know what? Hearing threatening messages only motivates me. attorney friends brought this up to me is you know Senate Bill 217 um, ended qualified immunity for police officers uh, but in, in my own education I've been informed that that's not enough uh, that we need to be talking about prosecutors and DAs who don't bring about charges and aren't held accountable uh, for some of these injustices. How can we get policing to a point where they're literally so so small of a force that they are secondary by nature and by that I mean like 
there's always someone else who responds to, you know, whatever societal call that we currently envision the police responding to. What, what's lacking in this most recent uprising is someone who's clearly the, the leader of the movement, if you will, right? So you think about the civil rights movement, you think about like John Lewis and Martin Luther King and all these people. There was someone to point to to say this is the direction of this movement. This uprising doesn't have it because it doesn't need it. In reality, we are all our leaders and we are, you know, all in the midst of this and we are all being affected by it. I'm Echo. Um, I don't really have a city. I've moved around a shit ton my entire life. Um, most recently, Denver is home. The, the way that information travels now on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, everything, seeing these people die in real time and also not receive justice in real time is what's kept me radicalized. Now, someone called police to report McLean as a suspicious man wearing a ski mask and waving his hands. The 23-year-old was walking home from a convenience store. His family said he wore the ski mask because he was anemic and was often cold. McLean went into cardiac arrest on his way to the hospital. He died six days later. To date, no officers have been charged in his murder. Um, and people around the country, around the world, are still fighting to get justice for what happened to him. And her significant other laid next to her and screamed and prayed that they would come in and help her. They never came in and helped her. They let her die in her own home. They murdered her. Who streets? Who streets? Who streets? Where someone drove a car, look at that blue Jeep right there, driving into a crowd of protesters on the interstate, sending people scrambling. A protester fired a weapon in response, grazing at least one person. This morning, that one of our comrades, Russell, had been arrested in a Home Depot parking lot, as the others mentioned. And then word came that Lillian had been stopped by the police. She said, I'm being pulled over. She was able to reach one of the comrades. And the neighbor said that there were five police cars that had come to make this arrest, that she had been given many, many felonies and misdemeanors. The felonies included kidnap charges, riot charges. Uh, the police arrived, the SWAT team, he said there's an MRAP tank outside. We don't know what kind of, of, what kind of equipment they had. But as I was talking to him, you could hear the pounding, them demanding that he come outside, that he was going to be arrested. And he said, I want to see an arrest warrant. And they, they wouldn't show it to him. And then we got word that another comrade was arrested. And we're getting news that perhaps others in the movement against racism and demanding justice for Elijah McClain have also been arrested. They were sending a message that you better not mess with the Denver police. You better not challenge our racism. You better not challenge our license to be judge, jury, and executioner against whomever we want. How dare you organize black and brown and indigenous and white and Asian American and, and native people to stand together to demand justice. How dare you? treading lightly or trying to ask nicely again does not work. Um, 
and if anything is contradictory to what we're supposed to be fighting against, which is that level of oppression, which is that corruption. Uh, and when we give in to that by being fearful of the repercussions, we're prohibiting ourselves from making any progress. Because I think about my idol, um, Asada Shakur, and she was threatened with a life sentence in prison, you know? And they couldn't shut her up. So I'm trying to be like her, I'm trying to tap my inner Asada. I think Twitter personifies it best as like, um, the, the red party says no, and the blue party says no, but with like a, a hug, right? Or like a really nice messaging. I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. That is no longer viable as, as a republic, as a democracy. Um, the fact that we allow other parties to field candidates, but then have created an environment where they will be essentially ignored down to a two-party system makes it so that we can't actually have an honest conversation. Kingdom of racial and political violence. as a patriot muster. Why they are taking me they just pulled over somebody and now they walked up they asked for my name i asked him why he needed my name he said i had a warrant for my arrest they've clearly been following me i don't know what's happening have i felt threatened oh you betcha i wasn't saying my voice is being suppressed challenged is the more appropriate word challenged with the full force of the american government <laughs> Um, endless funds and resources um, trying to make me into something that I am not. Uh, no, personally, as a, as a person of color, I do not feel like 911 is an option. People are now more willing to listen than ever before, and we're able to have these tough conversations. I'm hearing people say systemic racism and anti-racism and intersectionality and using those terms properly, and we, we didn't see that before. And we have to split hairs between what's uh, conduct that can be charged and conduct that cannot be charged. You run into a, a situation where there's an open question about what is allowed then in a society, right? Like you've got the egregious example of Elijah McClain. And if you're not going to charge anyone there, then that just kind of opens the gate for no accountability, which again, runs counter to what we're seeing in, in terms of state legislation, right? Where Colorado is trying to move forward and holding police officer accountable. But if you're not going to press charges, then the bill doesn't matter. It's a moot point. I really liked um, Council Member Sitabaka's like Peace Force. All right, so the Peace Force bill is essentially a bill that was written by um, myself and Katie Leonard and Carrie Joy. And we came together as a coalition to create the Peace Force bill as a piece of legislation that would offer a foundation for the subsumation, which is just like a legal word to mean it would take over the Department of 
that's essentially DPD. Um, and so what that would look like is a more holistic and socially, I would say social service driven perspective on public safety. Council members discussed a plan tonight to replace the police department with a new department called the Peace Force. Council members say while this wasn't the bill that they could support, they say this isn't the end of the discussion on changing policing here in Denver. I always like to think in terms of like, will this be a chapter in a history book or will this be like one of those did you know blurbs? Um, I think this has opened up like another type of chapter in that movement in terms of how people have responded. But I think we're at that critical juncture where we have to figure out where that energy gets translated. And if there isn't, then, you know, maybe the chapter is two pages instead of four pages or whatever that means for history books. I hope that the work we're doing now makes for a better life for the babies. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now. Perfect.